Well, good morning, happy coders. Uh, it's, it's morning where I am. I have my coffee here. I normally do these in the evening, but I wanted to try something different. So um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the Sign In Component Masterclass. This whole video, it's going to be a little bit more in depth. We're going to talk all about the Sign In Component that is available to you in Funkable X. And if we haven't met before, my name is Darren, and uh, I started this YouTube channel to teach you um, some awesome coding things that you can do specifically in Thumpable X, which is an app builder that you can make a whole entire app without writing a single line of code. Now, what are some use cases for when you would want to use the sign in component? Well, if you ever want to store data based on who a user is, so if you want a person to, to be able to enter data and save their data in your app, you will want to have some kind of authentication mechanism so that you can associate their data with them. And I've actually had a lot of requests on using the real-time database. So um, I'm gonna do a few tutorials uh, over the next uh, few videos, starting out with this, the sign in component. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, jump into the screen here and we can actually um, look at a few things before we get started. Now Thunkable has great, great documentation and everything I'm going to be going through in today's video for the most part is documented here. I'll have this linked down in the description. You can see here this is email sign in by Firebase and we're basically going to go down this page here. So if you ever have a question, a great place to start out is the documentation. And if you're just getting started with your app and you want to integrate this sign in component, um, another great place to get started is this video that Thunkable put out called How to Build a Sign in Screen. What I, uh, what I wanna point out to you is right here, um, the first line in the description, they have a link to a project where you can actually remix the app that they are making in the video and this is exactly what theirs looks like. So you can see they have a simple sign-in screen and they have all of the blocks available here that you could use. So I'll have that link down in the description as well. Let's jump in to the video. Now, if you're wanting to incorporate the sign-in component with your app, you're going to need a few things from the design perspective. So I've already kind of mocked this up because I don't want to go into detail um, on designing your app in this video. I want to show the functionality of the sign-in feature, but here's what I have already in place. So on my login screen, I have a place where the user can enter their email, a place where they can enter their password, a button to create account, and a button to log in. You can also see down here at the bottom, I have two alerts set up, and this will allow us to display errors and allow the user to, if uh, later on we'll talk about resetting your password, so I have a separate alert for that one. On the uh, FirePass screen, so I'm making an app called FirePass over these next few videos. Um, here I just have a place where we can display a message and a button to uh, log out. So once the user is authenticated on this screen, we will send them to the FirePass screen, so this is like your main screen in your app, and then we have a button to allow them to log out. And the only other thing you need to add in order to incorporate the sign-in component is to actually add the sign-in component. So let's come over here and type in sign-in, and um, I can actually bring this into my app. So I'll, I'll drag sign-in into the invisible components, and I will rename that to follow the convention that I've been using. And if you look over here in the properties, you can see under simple, there's nothing and under advanced, there's nothing. And that's because uh, we're using a third-party service called Firebase, which is basically a support system um, for apps. And you hook up Firebase to your app, so it's not like component specific. So the credentials for your Firebase system or your Firebase account is actually at the app level. So if we come over here, we scroll down at the app level properties, you'll see here your Firebase settings. So this is what we need to now do. So we're gonna jump away from Thunkable for a moment and go set up our Firebase account. 
So here I am at firebase.google.com. Firebase is a product of Google. It was originally a startup and Google bought them out and Google has really just taken off and added a lot of really awesome features to Firebase. But the benefit of this is if you already have a Gmail account, um, you don't need to set up anything else. You just need to log in um, and you can use Firebase. If you want to know how to set up your Gmail account, um, I'll walk through that process in my video on creating your Thunkable X account. So I'll link that uh, maybe in a YouTube card. Um, so once we're on this uh, Firebase page, let's go to the top right over here and go to Go to Console. And this is where we can actually start a new project. So we will go to Add Project and then enter the name of our project. So I'll call mine Firepass. And then do I want to send Google and Analytics my data? Sure, they can use that. And I accept the agreements for this. So I'll create project. And this is going to go through and uh, create our project inside of Firebase. Awesome. So now we have a Firebase project set up. And you can see here there are a ton of features and things that you can use with Firebase. Over here on the side, you have authentication, database storage, hosting, uh, cloud functions, the ML kit, that's for machine learning. Um, then you get into like quality where you can test your crashes and analytics and growing um, your, your platform or your app. So a ton of features with Firebase, but today we're really gonna dive into the authentication. So you can go and select that there. And we're going to turn on email authentication because that is what uh, Thunkable has available for us to use. So we'll go into sign in method. And then you can see right now everything is disabled. And what we want to do is enable email password. So we can come over here and allow users to sign up using their email address and password. Yes, that's what we want. So we'll save that. So now email authentication is enabled. So one other thing you might want to do is customize the emails that are getting sent, uh, sent out. And so you can do that under this templates section. So the emails that will be sent out um, are the email address verification and the password reset. And so right now you can see that, um, you know, there's no like sender name provided. Um, there's no reply to. So if we come here to edit, we can actually add in some customized things based on your uh, project. But what I would recommend doing is update the project level setting. Uh, but before we do that, I just wanted to note the email itself, they don't allow you to update because they don't want these emails going to spam. So it's just smart stuff about how Google handles their emails. So here, let's go to the project level setting and we can update uh, our, our name so that it doesn't show like, on mine it wouldn't show like Firepass dash one, two, three, four, eight, six, seven. We want it to show just Firepass. So different things like that. So that Firepass or Firebase uh, knows the name of your app. Um, so here, my name is already uh, Firepass, the project name is, but my public facing name, see here, um, we wanna update this. So I'm gonna update my public facing name to just say, Fire pass. And then if you wanted to add a support email, um, you could, I could add mine here, I'm not going to. So now our Firebase project is set up, we've turned on email notifications, we've customized our emails, and so now we just need to hook up Firebase to Thunkable. And the way we do that is we need two things. One is an API key and two is the database URL. So an easy way to do this is to go back to our project overview. And then here you can see this little brackets, dash brackets, this is web. Um, so we're actually gonna go ahead and set up a web application and that's gonna give us our keys. So we will give it a nickname and register the app. And then here you can see it pops up with some code and this is actually um, looks like some HTML and a little bit of uh, scripting. Um, but you can see down here, and I'll have this blurred out, but you can see we have the API key, and then right down here we have the database URL. So these are the two things that we want to copy over to Thunkable. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. 
So we'll grab the API key. We'll come back over to Thunkable, paste the API key here, and then we need the database URL. So we'll go back, grab the database URL, and then paste that in. All right, so now we have a Firebase account set up. We have everything on that end set up, so we, don't, we won't uh, need to go back to that. Um, and now we can just kind of incorporate that in our Thunkable X app. Alrighty, so here on the block screen, we can see we have our sign-in component Firebase, and there are four blocks here. We're actually gonna go through each of these in order. We'll, we'll go through sign up, sign in, sign out, and reset password. I'm gonna show you how you can incorporate each of these um, in your app, and then at the end, I'm gonna show you three extra things that you can do that I think are pretty cool. So let's start with sign up. So I actually have a button called create account that's already on um, the design screen. So when I click that button, I want to sign up the, the user. So button dot create account, sign up. And what we're going to do is we need to input the email and password that's entered on the screen and then see what Google returns. So we're gonna send Google some data, try to, they're gonna try and create the account in Firebase, and then send us back if that was successful or not. So to input the email and password, we're actually just gonna to go to those fields themselves and grab the get blocks. So get the text from input email, we can duplicate that, and get the input password, get text, so we're gonna send them that, and then we want to see if uh, Google returns an error, or if Firebase returns an error, or if it uh, returns success. So um, there's two options there, so that's a, that's a check that we wanna do, and anytime we wanna check something, we'll use an if block. So we'll say if, let's say if not error, so if there's not an error, let's do the happy path first, so if there's not an error, well then we just want to send the user into our app. So then that is navigating to the other screen. So if we go to control, we can go to navigate to, and we'll change this to screen fire pass. So that's the happy path if um, they're able to sign up successfully. So if an error is returned, we want to display that error. And I've actually set up an alert to do this. There's different ways to do this, but I've done it with an alert. So I'll go to my alert warning. I want to set the message to the error that is returned. And then I want to show that error. And this is going to give the error a message like, your password is too short they can press okay and then try again. All right, so now would be a good time. We've only added a few blocks, but it'd be a good time to check that everything is hooked up and working. So let's go ahead and jump into our uh, test app here. I'll jump into mine and we can see um, if, it's, if it's working, we should be able to enter an uh, email. So we'll just do Darren at test.com. Enter a password. Let's do like one, two, three, four and press create account. Awesome, so you can see that what just happened was it sent it to Firebase, it checked to see um, if there were any errors, and it says Firebase sent back, password should be at least six characters. So I can press okay. And so let me update that to five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Press create account. And awesome, so it sent me to that other screen. And so now we can go and look back at uh, Fire Fire Pass or Firebase. Look at uh, our authentication section, and we should see a new user created, Darren at test.com, and I was created on this date. All right. So now that we've created an account, we want to be able to sign in with that account that's already created. Now the cool thing about this is. Check this out. We'll right click, duplicate, and yeah, let's put this here. And all we need to do is change this to button, uh, 
login. So they're logging in and then sign in Firebase call. Instead of sign up, we want to sign in. And that's going to kick out our blocks, but we just need to put them back in. So password here and put email there. And so now I should be able to use my uh, my login button that was on the screen to sign in. So let's check that out. So I will enter back in. Let's try, uh, like, actually let's do something that's um, not gonna work. So just put Darren in there and see what it returns. So let's press login. And yeah, it says sign in with email and authentication password failed. Uh, password must be a valid string. So didn't work. So that's working. The error is returning correctly. So now let's try Darren at test.com, enter in the password of one, two, three, four, five, six, and we should be able to log in and it sends us to the other screen. Awesome, so see how simple this is? Ah, I love it, I love it. So we've signed in, we've signed uh, up, we've logged in, and so now let's go through the log out process. And so for this, we're going to take uh, these blocks, but we're gonna replicate them on the other screen because that's where our, our our logout button is. So let's go to the, the fire pass or our, our home page and do the logout functionality. So we have a button for logout. I'll call that. And then in Firebase, we'll call in Firebase call sign out. We want to sign the user out. We will add the check of if not error. We will send them to the other screen. So navigate to the login screen. But if there is an error, we want to display that message. So we'll come to our warning. We'll set the message to error. And then we will display that alert warning. Darren at test.com. One, two, three, four, five, six, log in. And then now we're going to log out. And it was successful. It sent me back to the other screen. So if so, if you're like 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 me, you're like, man, this is this is really easy. Man, this is really all I'm doing is basically making the same blocks. Well, let's get into something fun.